Page 30, Kumbaya. This is in the key of D major. Two sharps. We have an F sharp and a C sharp. All the Fs and all the Cs are sharp bented. Like a little break between the phrasing? I always do. You want to bring out the melody, it's pretty much in the right hand until you get down to the third line. On the third and fourth lines, it's in the left hand. Hopefully you know your primary chords for D major because you got them all over the place. And both hands. So if you know this stuff and you get to this kind of music, it's a piece of cake. If you don't know this stuff, now you got to struggle and figure it out. And let's see, what are those notes in that chord? What is that chord? You know, you ought to be able to glance at it by now and know, oh, that's a one chord in D major. Right? That first chord? Yeah. You get accustomed to seeing these chords over and over and you just instantly know what they are and where they are and you know how to play them. Well, let's say a few things. I'm going to start with the right hand. Right at the beginning, you have a two beat pickup. See, this is six four times, so there's six counts in a measure. My suggestion when you get this kind of thing is just get that, keep that quarter note pulse going. I don't care if it's 6, 12, 20, 30, however many, just keep the pulse going. But in the right hand at the beginning, you have the pickup measure, and that's a 1, 2, not a 1, 3. So you can play the A with the fourth finger. Now look at the rhythm in that first full measure. Two eighth notes, and then there's a quarter note and a half note. Well, if you played it without the tie, just two eighth notes, a quarter note, and a half note is what it is. One and two, three. One and two, three, four. Just add the tie when you get comfortable with that, and just don't play the quarter note again. One and two, three, four. And you can work out these rhythms very carefully. My concern is you'll say, well, just play it for me, and then I'll know it. And I am so against that. That is so backwards. If you're doing it that way, good luck. You'll never be able to sit down and read the music and be able to play it and know you're playing it correctly unless you've heard it first. And that's unfortunate. It really is. Don't. Learn to read the music and get it. And then when you think you've got it, then you can go listen to others and see how they're doing it too. And compare yours to theirs. And you know, right? Don't ape somebody else. That is, don't copy others just to try and learn it. That's, that's, a, actually, that's a trap. That's a mistake, in my opinion. Mm. Now you have this rhythm with the two eighth notes and the quarter note and the half note with the tied thing in several places. Go down to the third line. You have the one chord in the right hand. Then you have the four chord. And then you have the one chord again. Since we're here, I want to point out an alternate fingering for the one chord, because we're doing, using one, three, five. Okay, it's not the only fingering can be used. For the next to the last measure on the third line on that one chord, you can do that with a one, two, four. The reason is you're coming off of the four chord. So sometimes we will just do a one, two, four there. And then a one, three, five on the next one. Um, so again, you can have alternate fingerings on these chords sometimes. And the last line, you're starting out with the five, seven chord in the right hand. And the next measure, you have a one chord. Well, again, you could play that one chord with the one, two, four. Because when you go to the four chord, you're there. In the third line, in that first full measure, you have a one chord. You could play that one chord with a one, two, four instead of a one, three, five. Because a one, two, four prepares you for the four chord coming up. And then for the last measure of the third line, then a one, three, five because that prepares you for the 5-7 chord coming up. Can. Don't have to, but you can. I probably will. In the left hand, we got the, the same chord. And we'll talk about the third line, fourth line too. We'll talk about the third line. The same thing happens in the fourth line. So we'll get the third line. In the left hand, we have the one, three. Then you play the half note. They're suggesting you go over the thumb to get the B. 
Ugh. I suggest you play the half note A with the second finger. And then you can play the B with the thumb. Then the A on the next measure with the second finger because you can reach down and, and get the little finger on the D for the next phrase. In the last measure of the third line, you don't have to use the second finger on the A. The thumb is fine because you're not going up to a B. Now you're going to go down. But on the last line again, you're going up to a B. So I suggest the second finger on the half note A. And then for the last phrase, there at the bottom, the last two measures, it's between phrases, so go ahead and use the second finger again on the G. That lifting second finger from A to G gives you that break that you need between phrases. And the second line, the last two measures. Uh, you're coming off of a phrase, and you have the pedal down. I'd lift the pedal with the hand so we get a break between the phrases. Push the pedal down right after you play the notes. Then I would lift the pedal up as I play the up sharp and the chord. Leave the pedal up until after I play the D. In other words, I'm not pedaling the up sharp. I just left it out, so it's this way. It's very similar to the bottom of the page, the last two measures. You're ending a phrase, and then you come off, lift the pedal up with the, with the fingers there, so we get a break between the phrases. I'm playing that with second finger. And they're saying, now don't pedal at all until after you played the D in the left hand. You could do the same up above. I don't know why they've indicated it's different, but they have. There is an error in this piece in the music. I need to point it out because I don't want you to get too confused. It is important you understand all these symbols and all this junk. Take a look at the third line down. It's the next to the last measure. You have this going on. In the right hand, it's a whole note. Now, technically, you could say, okay, a whole note could be the whole measure. In that case, you're fine. I don't think that's what they meant here, because they've been using dotted whole notes for six count measures. So I think here, they left out the half rest in the right hand. As the, as the left hand is playing those two quarter notes, there should be a half rest in the right hand. The right hand should be silent there. So you've got here, one, two, three, four, and then lift the right hand up as you play those two quarter notes. It's the same as the next measure. In the right hand, it's a whole, a whole, whole note and a half rest there. So you can pencil in a half rest in the next to the last measure of the third line. <laughs> Let's try this together as a two beat pickup. So I'm going to give us four counts. I'm going to leave the metronome at 70. I don't think we can do it. There's not too many eighth notes in this. So we're starting out in where the right hand is here. All right, it's not exactly a D position, it's this position. Left hand is in D, and the foot's on the pedal. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Four. 